We're going to cover uh, block diagrams for this chemical process control course. And uh, what we want to do with block diagrams is be able to study the stability or behavior of closed loop systems. Okay, so in closed loop, as we have feedback control, well, we want to be able to see how that feedback controller affects uh, the closed loop performance. And so we're going to use a block diagram representation to do this. Um, and so we're going to illustrate how to develop a block diagram, uh, particularly for chemical process control, but it's also applicable to other systems as well. Um, so we're going to go with a stirred tank blending process um, considered in earlier discussions. So with this, um, you know, we have uh, some disturbances here like X1 and W1. Uh, W1 is our flow rate, X1 is our composition. But we might have another um, stream coming in as well that's controlled by this valve. Now we have an analyzer a transmitter. That's also a concentration transmitter or a concentration controller. Okay, so we have a CC or a CT. And then we have an I to P. Okay, so this is going to be coming from our controller. That might be a milliamp coming from our controller. And that might be a PSI a G in the case of a pneumatically controlled valve. Um, and then we have our set point here. Okay, so for our controlled variable, in this case, um, we're gonna have the outlet concentration of our tank. Okay, so that's gonna be this, this X right here, coming out of the tank. Um, now, our measured variable is also the same. If we assume this is a well-mixed reactor, that the outlet concentration is equal to the concentration inside the reactor, the thing that we can manipulate is W2. Okay, so that's the flow rate of stream two coming in with our valve. And then maybe a disturbance variable in this case would be X1, although we could have W1 or X2 as well. Okay, so um, in this case, we'll just assume that the volume of the reactor, W1 and X2, are assumed to be constant, just to simplify our problem. So we've done this before, but let me just review this briefly. Start with a species balance. Now in this case, uh, this is for um, X. Okay, our concentration uh, coming out of the reactor. So we have our accumulation, and then we have our in terms right here, and then our out terms right there. Okay, and these are our variables. So we have X, X1, W1, and or sorry, W2 um, as our variables. What we can do is then linearize this. Okay, so we take the derivative with respect to each of our variables. And, um, and then plug in the nominal conditions, okay, like x bar, um, w1 bar, w2 bar. Okay, so those are the nominal conditions. And then we combine um, variables, okay, deviation variables into uh, this prime. We redefine them as, as the prime variables. Okay, for our deviation variables, we then convert it into the Laplace domain. And then we have our two transfer functions. We want to be able to come up with x of s over x1 of s, and then also x of s over w2 of s. Okay, and so to do that, we just successively assume that one of these is zero, and then get our first transfer function, and then assume that the other one is zero, and then get our second transfer function. Okay, so these are some of the constants within those models. This is just a really high level, very fast review of how to do this part of the process. But what that gives us is our disturbance transfer function and then also our process transfer function. Okay, and coming into this, that's our W2, that's our manipulated variable, and then there's our disturbance variable. So each of these is, you could classify um, this stream on the top, that's going to be how a disturbance how a disturbance, a change in the disturbance would, would affect a change in concentration. Okay, so that'd be like a delta concentration uh, coming out or a delta X. Okay, and that'd be like a delta X1 and that'd be like a delta X2. And then we combine those to get the total mass fraction change due to disturbances or manipulated variables. Okay, so um, we did it for this part right here, but we also want a transfer function for each piece of the equipment in our overall process. Okay, not just the process and the disturbance. 
Okay, now we, first of all, what we do is we just put on standard labels. Okay, so Y is our output, typically. Um, you have YU, which is the Y contribution from the U variable, YD, which is from the disturbance variable. Okay, and then we also have our measured Y value. Okay, we have our set point that comes in. Uh, we typically transfer that to the same units that the measurement signal is in. Okay, so that's Y tilde set point. We compare those two, get an error. And then that might be a pressure or a current coming out of a PID controller or an electronic signal. And then we have maybe a flow rate, um, which would be our U or manipulated value. Okay, so here are just some of the definitions for these different signals. And then we're also going to have transfer functions. Uh, the G's are going to be the transfer functions. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, show you just a standard block diagram form. Um, now in this case we're going to apply this to this uh, this blending example. Okay, so we need transfer functions for many of the pieces of equipment here. We only did it for the process and the disturbance so far. We need it for the valve. We need it for the I to B converter or the current to pressure converter. We need it for the controller. So that might be a PID controller for example. Um, we might need it for the transmitter as well. There may be some dynamics or a gain there in the transmitter. Okay, so modify block diagram. These are the ones that we need that are in the pink, okay? And the ones that we already obtained were shown in the early part of the lecture with GD and GP. Okay, so let's just go through this. Um, assume that the dynamic behavior of the composition sensor, okay, or transmitter, be approximated by a first order transfer function where this is going to be the gain and then this is going to be the time constant. Okay, and then also for the controller, um, let's just say we have a proportional plus integral controller and then we're just going to use that for our G controller. Okay, um, now these are in the Laplace domain. Okay, now um, also for the measurement, okay, so this is, this is gonna be the measurement. It's gonna translate it from concentration into a signal. Now, in this case, I'm just gonna assume it's a milliamp signal that it's transferring it to. And let's just say that it's going to be fast, okay? Um, the sensor is going to be fast, um, and we're just going to use this part, okay, um, with time constant equals zero. We're going to use that to translate um, our YSP into, we use a KM there to translate that into a Y tilde SP. Now that's going to allow us to have this, um, the Y measurement and the tilde YSP. They're going to be in the same unit so that we can compare them for our air going into, for example, our PID controller. Okay, and then we also have a current to pressure transmitter. Now, this one is, is pretty standard because, you know, current typically goes, um, you know, from milliamp, um, you know, about 4 to 20 milliamp is a standard uh, for the process control industry. And then pressure for pneumatically actuated valves is between 3 and 15 psi g. Okay, so if we want to get the gain between how the milliamp changes the, uh, the pressure, uh, for a P to I or I to P converter, then we would typically have just a gain here. KIP is going to be 15 minus 3 PSIG divided by 20 minus 4 milliamp. Okay, so that's going to be um, 0 0.75 uh, PSIG over milliamp. Okay, that's going to be pretty standard. Okay, now we also have our control valve as well. Now, a controller valve, if it's fast, then we assume that the time constant is zero. But not all control valves are very fast, um, and so we may have to have some of our dynamics described by this first order plus dead time. Now, this is a gain right here. So this relates um, a flow rate divided by you know, a PSI G. So a delta flow divided by PSI delta PSI G. Um, is going to be our gain, and then our time constant is going to be typically in units of time, like seconds. Okay, so we have uh, put in all of the different transfer functions. Um, there's our measurement. Um, there's our P 
PI controller, there's our KIP, there's our valve, and then there's our process and also our disturbance. Okay, so we have all of the different pieces and I've also labeled these with some standard units um, that are typical in non, um, you know, so there's, there's either pneumatically and, um, you know, these, these milliamp signals that go into a PID block. Typically we have DCS systems, distributed control systems, where everything is uh, digitized. And so we, uh, this is actually occurring within the computer. Okay, but once you get out to here, you know, that's going to be a PSI going to a pneumatically actuated valve. That's going to check, you know, affect the flow rate. For the purposes of this class, let's just go ahead and assume we have milliamp signals here. Okay, so PID with derivative on measurement. What do we do about that? Because that doesn't fit our standard, uh, you know, here we just had a PI controller. But what about the D part, the derivative part? Okay, so we have derivative on measurement, um, you know, and, and we do this to avoid derivative kick versus derivative on error. Um, and so we have our G1, and then we're going to have our second transfer function, G2. But where does that go in our transfer function? You can see it's a function of this Y M, or the measured value. Okay, so what we do is we just um, we take our measured value, and then we have our G2, this part of it right here, the derivative part, and then we're going to go ahead and add them back in. So this is going to be the PID output, this is our PI output, and this is our D output. Okay, so we just add those two together to get our proportional integral and derivative action. Okay, so um, just in the, the big block, okay, so we may need to add this with the summation here if we have a derivative on measurement.